Hey guys, we have the Rave Hoodie. Welcome to Nita Crickets. My name is Anita. First of all, let me let you guys know that I have a written pattern and a video tutorial on my channel for these mesh bell bottoms, okay? So literally, you're just going to be in position to make yourself this full outfit if you check on my channel. Now, this tutorial is for the hoodie, all right? It's very, very simple. Any adventurous beginner would jump onto this tutorial and make themselves this very simple hoodie, all right? And also, it's so much giving festival vibes. Honestly, I would love to see someone at a festival wearing this. And the good thing about this um, top is you can either wear it with your hood on or you can just have it have the hood down and have it like a coal just around your neck so i know some of you are not video tutorial persons so i also wrote a pattern for this hoodie and it's on my etsy i need to mention guys that i have a target to buy new recording equipment and i always put the target on my coffee shop and anyone is welcome to support my target just in case you would love to give back to me um, i'm going to be leaving a link to my coffee shop in the description box but also you are doing so much by just watching my tutorials i am super 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 grateful all right now let's get into the tutorial first of all i'm going to be working with this kind of yarn it is robin 100 percent acrylic and it is size two so i'm going to be doubling my strands then i have this six millimeter hook that I'm going to be working with. I need to mention that any DK yarn can actually work this project. But if you're working with DK yarn, do not double your strands. I just doubled mine because I need some sort of gauge. Now to jump into the tutorial for our foundation chains, we are going to be considering um, like half our bust measurements. For example, if your bust is 33 inches, you are going to divide 33 inches by two and it gives you like 16.5, I think it does. Yes, 16.5. So you are going to make foundation chains that are equivalent to 16.5 inches, all right? Now for me, also, um, I need to let you know that we are going to be working in sets of two so uh for any number of chains that you work make sure that total number of chains that you have worked is divisible by two all right once you have the number of chains you need to work i personally worked 52 chains and here i am into the second chain stitch i am working a single crochet okay so i'm going to be working one single crochet into every stitch every stitch on this row until I come to the end of my row. Now remember I told you we are working in sets of two, okay? But again, since we started into the second chain stitch from the hook, I am personally going to end up with 51 stitches. That is so very okay, okay? Make sure that once you have worked your row of single crochets, the number of stitches that you have should be an odd number, okay? an odd number that is not divisible by two all right i will show you along like along the tutorial why we need that plus one uh, stitch that makes the number not divisible by two now once you have come to the end of your row you're going to chain four and turn your work i'm going to be working the mesh stitch some of you may call it the fillet stitch yes now I'm going to, three of the chains are going to act as a stitch. So I'm going to skip the first stitch and also the second and into the third stitch, I'm going to work a double crochet. Then chain one, skip one, work one double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, work one double crochet in the next stitch. And this is what I'm going to do for all the stitches along this row. Now, when you work this stitch, you are going to see that when you get to the end of your row you're going to chain one skip one and then you have that last stitch that uh sorry that has to end the row where you have to work a double crochet now if your stitches are of an even number you are going to find that you won't have that last stitch where you need to work that double crochet that is exactly why we start with um 
a number that is divisible by two and then on the second row sorry on the first row of single crochet the number shouldn't be divisible by two now this is what we have and this is what i have okay that's my first row i hope i am clear okay i also shared this when i was working the mesh bell bottoms i shared that and showed you the result of that you know i don't know i just hope you've understood okay now for the next row we are going to chain four and turn our work uh like i said three of the chains act as a stitch so we skip one and work a double crochet into the next stitch chain one skip one work a double crochet in the next stitch this mesh stitch is so easy you just need to place double crochets exactly where they are double crochets so that's how it is and that's how you're going to work this whole row until the end of the row make sure that the number of chain gaps you have on this row are the very exact number of chain gaps that you had on the previous row okay so just do this until the end of the row and then i'm going to get back and show you what to do so this is how my row looks like and this is row three okay this is row three and that's how it looks like so i'm going to let you work two more rows so it becomes a total of um four then from there i can proceed so um this is me with um four rows of the mesh stitch now these four rows are literally just for my underbust okay okay so um i figured that the rows may be very few okay for my under bust and my top will be super super short so i worked uh four more rows of the mesh stitch to make it a total of nine rows including the single crochet row for this row we are going to chain three and turn our work that chain three is going to act as a stitch so we skip one and work a double crochet into the next stitch just like that now this is a decrease okay chain one skip one work a double crochet into the next stitch chain one skip one work a double crochet in the next stitch please excuse the breathing that is in the background my kids are sleeping and this is the only time i got okay to actually voice this video now you are going to just keep doing this chain one skip one work a double crochet into the next stitch until you have two chain gaps left to end your row and um, now this is it i am going to be working a decrease at the end of my row as well so i'm going to chain one skip one and into that double crochet stitch i'm going to work an incomplete double crochet and then yarn over skip one get into the third chain stitch of the three chains that started the previous row insert my hook in there and then i'm going to pull through a loop yarn over i'll pull through two and then i'll yarn over and pull through all three loops so this would be more like a Two double crochets together but the only difference is we have um, skipped stitches in between okay so you can see that we have a decrease on this side at the end of the row and a decrease at the beginning of the row once again for the next row we chain three okay it works as a stitch so we skip one and into that double crochet we work one double crochet just like that so also this is a decrease okay because initially we were chaining four all right now chain one skip one work a double crochet into the next stitch chain one skip one work a double crochet in the next stitch and you're going to do this until you have two chain gaps left to end your row just like we have done previously now you can see that we are working a decrease at the beginning and at the end of the row this you are going to do after you are confident that the number of normal rows that you have are enough for your for the coverage that you need on the underbust okay before you start working these decreases okay now once you are almost at the end of the row just like i am you will chain one and skip one and then get into that double crochet stitch work an incomplete double crochet yarn over skip one get into our last stitch right there and then 
uh, pull through yarn, yarn over pull through two, then yarn over pull through all three loops. Okay. Again, the next row, chain three, turn your work. Do the very exact thing that we have been doing for these past two rows because I just need us to keep decreasing and decreasing and decreasing until we just have um, a few chain gaps left at the top of our neck because this is more like a halter top. If you have worked halter tops before, this is it, okay? So once you have chained three, turned your work, skip one, work a double crochet in the next stitch. Again, chain one, skip one, work a double crochet in the next stitch. And do this until you have like two chain gaps left to end your row. I'm sorry, I just jumped into this because I had no time left. Like I said, this was a last minute thought. So I had no time because I'm working on some other project as well. But yes, just keep working those decreases until you have something that looks like this okay and once you have something that looks like this and you just have a few chain gaps left at the top of your neck you are now going to work chains okay i personally worked 45 chains these chains should be in position to go all the way around the back of your neck and then all the way back to the other corner of our row okay I hope I am clear. This is to go at the back of our neck, all the way up to the back of our neck, and then come back all the way down to the corner of, um, let me not call it a corner, to the very first stitch that started your last row. I hope I am clear. So personally, I worked 45 rows. They were just, sorry, 45 chains. They were just enough for me. Okay. And I know they are enough for you as well. Whether you're working, whichever size you're working, I just feel they are enough for you. So this is it. Now I'm going to get into that very first stitch that started the previous, sorry, the third chain stitch of the three chains that started the previous row. I'm just making sure my chains are not twisted. Okay. Now in there, right there. Okay. That's where I'm going to insert my hook and work a slip stitch just like that so this is it all right now i'm going to get my scissors and cut my yarn then um, just secure this end also i forgot to mention that we literally don't have to have the same number of chain gaps on our last row you can have more chain gaps on your last row but just make sure it's not too wide enough okay it, it, sorry uh, just make sure it's not too wide just make it in any form of a halter top that you have worked before. Yes, I know most of you have done that. Okay. So um, here it is. I have cut my yarn secure at the end. And this is how it looks like. It almost looks like a bag. <laughs> yeah. But now um, we are going to get to the bottom of our work down here. And I'm going to set my hook into the very first stitch right there. And I'm going to get my yarn, yarn over pull through. Um, yarn and i will chain one into that very first stitch i'm going to work a single crochet and now into the single crochet post right there i'm going to work a single crochet now from here i'm just going to be working two single crochets into every double crochet post okay so um that was my first uh single crochet and this is my second one this woman is breathing like she's panting like a dog but just you know just ignore the background noise now um i'm just going to be working two single crochets into every double crochet post until i get to the very first row of decrease that we worked right there okay because that's more like a corner now I'm going to let you guys do this until you are right there, then I am going to show you what to do. Alright, now um, once we are here, as you can see, I have already worked my two single crochets. Now into the top of that um, double crochet post, or let me say the corner, we are going to work three single crochet posts, sorry, three single crochets into the very same spot. Okay, because now I need a corner, more like a turning point. 
You see that? You see what it has given us? Okay. Now I'm going to now resume with two single crochets into every double crochet post. So just keep working um, two single crochets into every double crochet post all the way until up to the chains that we worked okay now also when you get to the chains it's the very same thing we are going to do we are just going to be working single crochets into every chain stitch all the way around okay for all the chains but just make sure that um, you have the exact number of stitches that you should have for your chains okay also oh I forgot to mention um, the number of chains that you work should be for a number that is non divisible by two. I repeat, the number of chains that you work for your neck grip should be an odd number. That's why I have 45 instead of 44. Okay, so that's it. Now, um, right here, as you can see, I will work that single crochet at the top of that double crochet post. Then, now I'm going to jump into my chains. Okay. And I'm going to start working one um, one chain stitch sorry one single crochet into every chain stitch all the way around okay so basically what I have done on this side on the edge of this side is exactly what I'm going to do on my left edge okay where I put the corner or single crochets in the corner that's exactly what I'm going to do on the other edge as well so just work that all the way down Make sure for the corner you do exactly what we did on this side and then go all the way down until the end of your row. Okay, so let me meet you once you have done all this all the way down, then show you what to do. And um, here it is, it does not look any different from a bug, <laughs> but yes, it will make sense later on. Now, um, as you see here, I am going to find a point for where to get my uh, hood started because it's now what we are going to be working but first we are going to be working on the opposite side of our foundation chains that means it's more like the inside okay so i'm just going to find a point along here which feels like um it's on the side of my neck okay and i will attach my yarn onto the hook pull through yarn and chain one I will work a single crochet into that very same stitch right there so now I'm going to work one single crochet into every stitch all the way until I get down here at the mesh uh, the mesh stitch okay so it's just quite a little disturbing me because it's not well placed on the table but yes just work your single crochets all the way until you get down to the mesh have like two stitches left right there and then um so um right there into that very first stitch of the uh, previous row like the last row of the top I work a single crochet into the chain gap I work a single crochet and then into the next stitch I will work a single crochet so into the chain gap I'm working one single crochet and then the second single crochet will go into the double crochet stitch okay so this is what I'm going to do all the way across for all my uh, stitches of the mesh until I get back to the other side of my uh, chains for my neck okay so just do that all the way and when you get here you will still work one single crochet into every chain stitch all the way until at the end of the row right there that's why I'm going to meet you then show you how to end your row all right so um, here I am this is how my work looks like okay and now here i am going to work a slip stitch into the chain one that started the row just like that now the next row is going to be for the mesh okay um you need to count all the stitches you have on this row and make sure the number is not divisible by two it should be an odd number all right so chain four we are not turning our work 
three of the chains are going to act as a stitch so we skip um the next stitch and then into the next we work a double crochet then chain one skip one work a double crochet into the next stitch chain one skip one work a double crochet into the next stitch and this is what we are going to do all the way around for all the stitches that we have until we have one stitch left to end the row okay you should have one stitch left to end the row okay so just go all the way around i'm going to meet you once you are almost ending your row then i'll show you how to end it so um here i am and as you can see i have one stitch left if you see it's right there so i'm going to chain one and then get into the third chain stitch of the four chains that started the row and in there i'm going to work a slip stitch okay make sure it is the third chain stitch i had inserted my hook into the second chain stitch so right there and um, that's how you end your row now once we have our chains complete first we are going to count the number of chain gaps that we have on our row so count them all the way around and see the total number that you have and divide it by two okay for example if i had like 30 chain gaps i'll divide 30 by two and it will give me 15 okay so what i will do is i'm going to get my acting stitch marker and i'm going to mark i'm going to count um 15 chain gaps all the way from my starting point right there and i will mark the double crochet that makes the 16th chain gap or that makes the next chain gap so this means that i'm going to have um an increase at my very in my very first stitch and then an increase into that marked stitch okay so that means for both increments we are going to have 15 chain gaps in between them that's why i say do not mark the 15th uh, chain gap instead mark the next chain gap or the next the double crochet that makes the 16th chain gap i hope i am clear um the the, the point is to have 15 chain gaps from um our very first increment to the next okay now for the next row we are going to chain four sorry uh into this very first stitch right there we are going to work our double crochet so this is a v and i said this v for the mesh stitch means we have worked an increase now then i'm going to chain one skip one and work a double crochet into the next stitch chain one skip one work a double crochet in the next stitch this is so easy guys if you watched how i worked my bell bottoms you will know that this is the exact knowledge you need to transfer for this hoodie as well you're going to do this until you are at that double crochet that gets you to the marked stitch okay now for me this is it i am there here you are going to chain one and skip one into that marked stitch right there i'll take out my acting stitch marker and insert my hook in there and there i am going to work a double crochet chain one again work a double crochet into that very same stitch so i have a v in there as well and now chain one skip one work a double crochet into the next stitch chain one skip one work a double crochet in the next stitch and this i am going to do all the way until i come to the very last double crochet of the row okay right there i'll just get back and show you how to end your row or when you get there you chain one and work a slip stitch into the third chain stitch of the four chains that started the row okay so this is how your work has to look like oh sorry guys i worked um that at this row without you guys but now let me show you how to work the next row just trying out um what i need to do exactly so yes once again as you can see i have worked my double crochets and we are having an increment at the start of the row and at the center of the row and even for this row you will get to um counting all the chain gaps that you have divide by na the number by two and then mark 
that center of the row okay just like you did on the previous row now there is no maths about it it's just the same thing we are going to be doing okay so this means we are going to have an increment right there at the start of the row and right there at the marked stitch usually for me i don't go ahead counting again i just look for that stitch that is in line with my previous uh, increment i mark that and then work my increases right there because at the end of the day it's not going to show that you misplaced your increment okay so um i'm also this is a hoodie not like a skirt where you if you misplace you just misplacing your hip so here it doesn't matter now for the next row or the next rows even after this this is what you will do you will chain four and turn your work and um into that very first stitch we work a double crochet so this is an increase please make sure you turn your work for every row okay now our uh, chain one skip one work a double crochet into the next stitch chain one skip one work a double crochet in the next stitch so just keep doing working the chain one skip one work a double crochet in the next stitch until you are at the double crochet that is next to the marked stitch and into this marked stitch you will work a double crochet chain one one double crochet all in that very same stitch creating a v okay and you're just going to keep working these increments even on the next row mark the center work an increase when starting and then at the center of the row and just keep doing that until your work is wider and wider okay now um for me this is how it looks like after 15 rows of going wide remember the more width you do is the more it's going to drop okay like from the head all the way down your neck that's how your hood is going to drop so it's more like the more wider you get the more um um width you have for your hood okay yes so i worked 15 rows and after that i worked uh five rows but later i added uh five normal rows so basically for my increment i have 15 rows and then after that i worked no more rows of the mesh stitch without working any increases whatsoever just chaining one working a double crochet into the next stitch and i did that for the next five sorry ten rows okay so basically for my hood i have a total of 25 rows yeah 25 rows here i was after working five normal rows and i just came in to show you how your closure should look like okay so once you have all the normal rows that you need for your coal uh you're going to work a string that is long enough very long mine is actually short i realized it later and you're going to make that knot at the center of your back okay the neck at the neck and then now here you will just get your end of the string and pass it through you know those holes on the side right there just just to have that crisscross you know closure and you'll just keep doing uh keep going crisscross it's okay it's okay you can skip a few chain gaps or you can just go into every chain gap all the way until down and that's how the closure is going to be for this top so yes that's how our top should look like and um you can have it as a coal or hoodie whichever you choose i am so glad i made this last minute project because it was really fun i hope you made yours perfectly thank you so much for watching bye